like God done for real blessed me for real for That's real. True. Like, he done took his time on me, like really blessed me, like gave me all the gifts that I can even imagine. Right. So I'm like, if I don't, if I don't do my part, like to the fullest that I can do it, I'm talking about work hard, right? Like yeah. give it everything I got. I feel like I'm cheating him. Mm. I feel like. I feel like I'm I'm letting him down. Like I'm cheating him. If I don't if, if I don't develop all the gifts he done given me into into like elite skills and be one of the best, I'm cheating. Him. Hey guys, welcome back to Keeps Hot Takes and on today's show. I got my guy C Ruff from Time Out Sports. Ruff, how you doing today, bro? I'm doing good, Keith. How are you? I'm doing good, bro. Uh, like I stated before we went on air, I really love that jersey. Um, and we're going to talk about our Rams coming up shortly. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I thought it'd be really good if we got into this whole Coach Prime situation. Uh, so as we know, um, Saturday night, late Saturday night, uh, early Sunday, uh, the news broke that Coach Prime, uh, who was coaching at Jackson State, took a power five job at Colorado. And I've seen a lot of mixed reviews on how they feel about this. So, Ruff, how do you feel about this uh, whole situation with Coach Prime? Well, it's so many layers. There's so many things that we don't know, uh, you know, pieces to the puzzle, so many uh, details that we're not aware of. It's just fans. It's just, you know, people trying to do media and that sort of thing. But, you know, it's not surprising to me. You have people all the time that take jobs for a couple of years, and then when another opportunity comes, they move on. And I feel like, you know, Coach Prime still did a lot for Jackson State and HBCUs in a short time, uh, from donating money, a part of his salary, to to the school. Um you know, just from the exposure aspect of HBCUs in general, watch them being on TV, a college game day. You know, he, he did a lot for them. And there's a lot of people saying, well, Coach Prime needed to use Jackson State as a stepping stone. Uh, I, I don't really believe that. I believe that Coach Prime, uh, you know, Deion Sanders is one of the greatest athletes of all time, any sport. Uh, his name alone rings bells, you know. It, so I don't really believe that, that he necessarily needed to use them as a step or so. I think he went there. Uh, he accomplished what he wanted to, uh, helping that program turn around. And now he's looking to do the same thing by proving that he can turn around another franchise, another team, college. Um, as Colorado was 1-11 in this season, so they were a terrible football team. Uh, I believe that he's going to, uh, you know, attack Colorado and that job and turn that football team around as well. Um, so that's my position on it. Wish Coach Prime the best of luck at uh, Colorado. And uh do thank him for what he did for Jackson State and HBCUs as a whole. Yes, I'm along the same lines that you're on. Um, I really don't get how people are saying he's a sellout and all, you know, that crazy stuff I've been seeing people um, say online. Um, because he said it in the 60-minute uh, interview that he did. He said when Power Fall – power five schools come calling he said he'd be foolish not to uh entertain them because it's not often uh that apcu coach gets calls from a power five school so um i knew that he would entertain the opportunity um and when when he got the job uh i'm really excited to see what he can do at colorado uh because they've only had three winning seasons since 2003 uh so hopefully they're patient with him and another thing that's alarming is the lack of black coaches at these power five schools. So um, as I look here in the Pac-12, De Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, is the only black coach currently in the Pac-12. They had three uh, this past season, but David Shaw at Stanford, he resigned. He, they were going to fire him because he, Stanford hadn't been good for a couple years. So he was going to get fired. Um Arizona State, of course, they fired Herm Edwards because he hadn't really done much at Arizona State lately. And Carl Darnell, I think that's how you say his name, Colorado fired him. So Pac-12 had three this season, but now they're only down to one. In the SEC, for the second straight year, they don't have a black coach in their conference. Uh, the ACC has two, so that's 
we need to get better with that. Uh, Dino Bevers at Syracuse and Tony Elliott at Virginia. Uh, the Big Ten has two. Um, and the Big 12, they have a Mexican-American coach. So I guess we can say they have a, at least one minority coach in their conference. But overall, I feel like we need more back, black coaches at these Power 5 schools. So I'm hoping Deion Sanders, he can go to Colorado and do amazing things. Uh, like you said, he did amazing things in his three years at Jackson State. Uh, they won two SWAC titles. Uh, he renovated their locker rooms, got them a new practice field. He even got them on game day, and that's never happened. So that was major. So I feel like he did a lot of great things in his short time at Jackson State. And I never – I thought he was going to wait till both his sons graduated or went on to the NFL. Then he may entertain NFL offers – I mean, uh, other college offers from other schools. Um, but I wasn't expecting him to leave before they both – um, you know, we're still at school. So I'm a little surprised on that front. I'll be interested to see if uh Travis Hunter will travel with Coach Prime to uh Colorado. He probably will, um, because Coach Prime got him to flip from Florida State and got the number one recruit in last year's class to come to HBC. So that was huge. And Coach Prime got a lot of big time commits and transfers to come to Jackson State. So in his short time, he did a lot for Jackson State and HBCUs. So like you said, I thank him for everything he did. And we'll have to see who they who they look to hire um, to replace Coach Prime because there's no replacing him. But um, we shall see who they look to um, hire as their next coach. Um, so we shall see on that front. So like we said, we wish uh, Coach Prime the best of the luck at Colorado. And I know after the Celebration Bowl, uh, I know he's still going to coach in that. Uh, he said once that's over, he will start at Colorado. So I want to wish him and Jackson State uh, good luck in the Celebration Bowl uh, next Saturday against North Carolina Central, the MEAC champs. All right. So now we're going to go to Ramley only. So let's go ahead and drop that intro. And when we come back, uh, we're going to catch you, catch you up on everything that's going on with West Ham State basketball. 21. Can you do something for me? 21. All righty, Ruff. So um, our, both our Winston State basketball teams are doing amazing things so far this season. Uh, our men's team, uh, they won the Gary Miller Classic uh, during Thanksgiving. Uh, they're on a six-game winning streak since dropping a tough game to a uh, top five Indiana program, Indiana PA. Uh, our Lady Rams, they've had some big home wins lately. Uh, last Saturday, they uh, – made, uh, who was it, Morris College. They were late, and the Lady Rams took it out on them and beat them 108-31. to 31. That was impressive. Without a, Amaya Tucker, uh, she's I guess she's injured right now because she hasn't played in the last couple games. I know the Lady Rams dropped a tough one Monday night to Virginia Wise, uh, but I know they'll bounce back at home next Thursday against Lincoln, PA, who ended their season. Uh, so, Ruff, how are you feeling about our Rams basketball teams, our, our men's team, they currently have a 17-game home winning streak. Uh, that's going to be put to the test uh, coming up with this uh, four-game homestand that they have to close out the year. Uh, they'll play Clark Atlanta Saturday. Then they have Lincoln, PA next Thursday. Then next Saturday, they'll play Virginia Union, who's always good. They always give us trouble. And then next Monday, uh, not the 19th, excuse me, the 19th, Against Bowie, they'll play. They'll play at home to close out the year. So, how you feeling about our Rams team so far, Ruff? Yeah, it's been it's been a good season so far. A good start. Uh, as far as the guys go, they look very good. Um, Samaja Teal is balling. Uh, Isaac Parsons looks good. Um, I mean, so many of them look good, man. Um, Jalen Gibson, the transfer, I didn't see State. State. Ooh. Man. Yeah, yeah, he he looks like he's he's gonna be a problem for us. Um, so many, like I said, don't really want to leave anybody out, but the team looks good. They're playing together as a team. Uh, Coach Hill is doing a a great job uh, once again. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing which, like you said, what we do in these four games. Um, at home, as most of their games so far has been on the road, so games yeah, hasn't been as busy. Yeah, they've been on the road, but they're going to be in games for four straight games. And uh, everybody, if you can, make sure they're to attend and uh, show that Rams support. 
Uh, when you talk about the young ladies, the Rams, the Lady Rams, as we call them, uh, they're doing well as well, doing good as well. They, uh, like you said, have a solid record so far. Uh, hopefully, Amaya Tucker is okay and will be back on the court soon. Um, but I like what I'm seeing from them as well. So I'm just looking forward to seeing what, what uh, men and women's basketball team do the rest of the year. And uh, hopefully we can bring back some championships. Yes, sir. That that would be nice. Um, as I see here, our Lady Rams are 3-0 and at home. Uh, and they've won uh, only one game on the road. They're 1-3 on the road so far this season. But in their three home games so far, they're blowing the doors off people. So they've won all of their home games by at least – uh, let's see here. Some quick math. They've won all their home games by at least 20 points so far. So the Lady Rams are blowing the doors off their opponents at home so far. And like I said, last Saturday against Morris College, going over 100 points is very impressive by Lady Rams. And like you said, our man's team, they look like they're on a mission so far so far this year, uh, winning six straight games. Uh, they're really locked in, and when they're locked in and connected on the defensive end of the floor, we're a really hard team to beat. Uh, and I like how our freshmen are looking, Casey Shaw, Jeremy Dixon, uh, and like you said, our backcourt of Samaj Teal and uh, Isaac Parsons, they're an electric young duo uh, who we're going to have for the next couple years. Uh, John Hicklin has looked good, and like you said, Jalen Gibson, he's looked good. The whole team has looked good so far. I don't want to leave anybody out. Jalen Austin, Xavier Fenno. Uh, so, like you said, I, I'm loving what I'm seeing so far from both teams. I'm hoping they can keep it going. Uh, and like you said, hopefully bring back some championships. And like you said, if you can come out, I'll give you those times again. Uh, for, so, our men's team this Saturday, uh, December 10th, 4 o'clock, they play Clark Atlantic in the game center. The the crowds have been electric so far this season, so let's keep that up. Uh, and then our double headers starting next Thursday, December 5th, will start at 5.30 next Thursday against Lincoln, PA. Then next Saturday, our double header will start at 2 p.m. And then next Monday, well, the 19th, December 19th at 7.30, I mean, excuse me, 5.30, uh, our doubleheader against Boo will start. So if you can make any of those games, definitely come out and support. And I saw something on IG where those three doubleheaders, if you bring canned goods, you get in free. So I l definitely like that they're doing that promotion. So hopefully they'll get a lot of canned goods, canned goods to help feed families during the holidays. So if you can definitely come out and support our Rams, definitely do that. All right. Uh, so let's get in talking about some NFL football now. Um, our first matchup, our Thursday night game, uh, I don't think it's going to be very good, but, you know, you never know. Uh, we got the Las Vegas Raiders visiting the Los Angeles Rams. Um, the Rams are really beat up. They won't have Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford can't come back until week 17. Uh, they claimed Baker Mayfield off waivers yesterday. I'm not really sure how it's possible that he'll be able to play tomorrow, but they said he's going to try. Uh, but the way the Raiders have been playing lately, Devontae Adams has been killing it. Uh, I got to take the Raiders. Uh, the Rams, just too many questions. Uh, quarterback, who's going to catch the ball for him. Uh, Aaron Donald, I doubt he plays. I think he has a high ankle sprain, so I, I, I doubt he plays on a, such a short week. Uh, the Rams are banged up. I know they'll be playing with pride because this season hasn't went the way they wanted it to go with all the injuries and Everything else has went on this year. I think the Raiders, I think they'll win this game because uh, they pretty much need to pretty much almost need to win out to have a chance in the loaded AFC uh, conference to try to sneak in and get that last wild card spot. They have a slim chance, but they're going to need to win almost all their remaining games and need some teams in front of them to fall apart. Uh, so I got the Raiders. They seem to have figured things out lately and they're, playing some good football right now. Ruff, how do you see this one playing out? Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. I think the Rams – I'm not Rams, excuse me. I think the Raiders will beat the Rams uh, on Thursday night football. I just think that the Rams have kind of given up, you know, on this season as it should really is over. Uh, mm -hmm. They are not going to make any noise. Uh, like you said, there's so many injuries from Matthew Stafford to Cooper Cup to Aaron Donald. Uh, and then when you talk about the team in general – 
Uh, I just don't like some of the moves that they made in the offseason. So by losing Von Miller, who is now hurt, torn ACL for the Bills, uh, yeah. you know, hoping for a speedy, speedy recovery for him. But yeah, the Rams they they kind of they've kind of mailed it in. Uh, it's over. See see you all back next year. Um, and so I think the Raiders will win that game. Uh, like you said, Devontae Adams has been a man on a mission lately. Um, and although they don't have a good chance to make the playoffs, they aren't mathematically mathematically eliminated. So you know, string together some wins, keep stringing stringing together some wins, and see what happens. So I'm going with the Raiders as well. And the Raiders, they'll have a very important game coming up, uh, I think, very soon against the Patriots because that could be an eliminator uh, for that uh, seventh wild card spot. So they'll definitely need to handle business there and Thursday night on Prime Video. All right, Ref, I'll let you get our first Sunday matchup. Uh, we got the New York Jets uh, visiting the Buffalo Bills. And like you just uh, stated uh, when we were talking about the Rams-Raiders game, unfortunately, Von Miller has a torn ACL. I'm wishing him a speedy recovery as well. Um, as we know, the Jets look a lot different under Mike White. They have so much talent at receiver. He's getting the ball to the receivers, and the offenses look like it has some life to it now. So how do you see this New York and uh, Buffalo game playing out, bro? I think the Buffalo Bills are going to take care of business as they know that this is not a playoff push. You know, they're going to make the playoffs, of course, but the seeding. Is up for grabs right now. We have a battle with them in Kansas City, especially in AFC. So I think the Buffalo is going to take care of business. Um, and Stefan Diaz is going to continue to play amazing as he has been. Uh, I'm looking for Josh Allen to take better care of the football this week. Uh, you know, he's he's starting to be what I would call cocky. Mm. And it's like, you know, you know that you're so gifted, you're so physically talented, and so you try anything. Some of the things he tries, it's just, it's just not a good idea. So I think the Josh Allen is going to take better care of the football this week, and they're going to play a, a very, very good game and take care of business against the New York Jets. I also have the Buffalo Bills. I think the Jets, they'll keep it close. Um, but like you said, Buffalo, they're battling with Miami for the division. Uh, so this is a game that they have to win because the Jets already have two losses in the division. Uh, so they can't afford to lose any more division games. Uh and like you said, this is a playoff push. Um, and Josh Allen, that's something that's very alarming. I've noticed when they get in close games, he hasn't been able to make the throws. He'll make a critical mistake. They'll end up costing him the game. And the Jets, they really got out to him the first time they played. Uh, he had a really bad game. His numbers weren't Josh Allen-like numbers. So I know he'll want to bounce back this time around against the Jets. And if he doesn't throw that interception in the game when they played earlier this season – the uh the Bills probably win that game. So I know Josh Allen, he'll be motivated uh to do much better against the Jets this time around. Uh next we have the Cleveland Browns visiting the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh for me, uh I had to take the Bengals on this one. Joe Burrow has never beat the uh Browns and the Browns usually blow the doors off the uh Bengals when they play. Joe Burrow is playing some of his best football his career right now. Uh, he just he's coming off a big win against Mahomes. Uh, it's a battle of Ohio, so hopefully they can you know come back down to earth, handle business against a state in state rival, a divisional rival, and I think Joe Burrow gets his first win against the Cleveland Browns. Deshaun Watson, he hadn't played in two years, and he showed it last week. He was all over the place with his throws. Uh, he just wasn't sharp, and you you. You come to expect that after not playing football for two years. You can't get better by not playing. Uh, so this only being his second game back, the way they played last week, if they played a good team like Cincinnati, they would have lost that game. Uh, so I think Joe Burrow finally gets his first win against the Browns. How about you, uh, Ruff? Yeah, I agree with you. I think that Cincinnati is going to get that win as well. Uh, like you said, Deshaun Watson, he definitely struggled when you talk about the Cleveland Browns. And that's to be expected. Like I said, two years without playing football. I mean, two years without doing anything. If you decide that you're going to stop working out for two years and then go back to the gym, I can assure you, you won't be moving the same weight. Nope. <laughs> so that's just life. You know, yes. so I think that it's going to take until next year for Deshaun Watson to get back to being potentially a top five, top ten quarterback at least. Um, but I think on this week, Cincinnati's going to keep the train rolling. And I think they're going to take care of business um, in a close one. 
I don't expect them to beat them by much, but maybe six or seven points. And then I think that uh, Joe Mixon will return as well, as he was out last week, not uh, passing concussion protocol. So that'll help them. I'm picking a, a Cincinnati Bengals to beat the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, that would definitely help if they could get Joe Mixon back. Uh, next, Ruff, I, I'll let you get this one because uh, you already know how I'm going to go with this one. Uh, we got the Houston Texans visiting the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, as we know, the Houston Texans, they they look like they're trying to get that number one draft pick, the way they play every week. Um, I have a feeling in my stomach that Ruff is going to pick the upset here. So let's find out. Ruff? Do you have the Houston Texans upsetting the Dallas Cowboys? I know your hatred for the Dallas Cowboys, so do you have the Houston Texans upsetting the Cowboys here? See, that's the thing. You know that I don't like the Dallas Cowboys, but <laughs> when I do them my picks, I keep it real. I don't pick from a position of hate. And okay. so no, I don't no, I absolutely don't have the Houston Texans winning this game. <laughs> if they do win this game, you all should be embarrassed. You uh, should be. <laughs> uh, so no, I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, should win that game fairly easily, 13 to 16 points. Okay. Houston Texans, like you said, they don't know what they're doing at the quarterback position. They play Davis Mills, and then they play Kyle Allen. Now they're going back to Davis Mills. I mean, what, what are we doing? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you, can switch, you can switch them five times, and neither one of them are good quarterbacks. <laughs> so, I mean, you just have to let this thing go. Just go ahead and go to the end of the season, figure out what y'all going to do to get a real quarterback. You had one of Deshaun Watson, but that's that's over. Yes, because they didn't get the coach he wanted, and he was like, "I'm done playing for y'all." Um, did you, I don't know if you know this, but the uh, Houston Texans are one of uh, two teams that haven't scored 20 points this year. The Denver Broncos are the other team. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. Um, but the Houston Texans, I have no idea what they're doing. They're going to get poor Lovey Smith fired. Uh, this just is, isn't a good football team. Like you said, the Cowboys should handle business, but I do notice that they do play down to their competition, and then they will turn on the gas in the second half. So hopefully they don't stress me out, and hopefully they handle business. Uh, the way our defense is playing right now, they should get out there. Whoever plays quarterback, Davis Mills, Kyle Allen, whoever plays quarterback, they should get out to them. Uh, their running back, P. Ryan, he, he – he, um, uh, Pierce, excuse me. He, he he can run that ball. That's concerning. Uh, he's the best player they have. Brandon Cooks doesn't want to be there. Uh, so I'm expecting Dak. Um, C.D. Lamb will have a tough matchup against Stingley, uh, the corner from LSU, who's really good. He's a lockdown corner. So C.D.'s going to have his hands full. Um, but I think Dak and the offense should move the ball up and down the field against this Houston Texans defense. Uh, expect us to lean on the run game because the Texans do not stop the run well at all. So I would not be surprised if Zeke, Tony Pollard, they go over 200 yards in this game. Uh, and we just spread it out to our weapons, and hopefully the starters are sitting halfway through the third quarter if we handle our business. So I got the Cowboys as well. Um, Ruff, who do you have winning uh, the Minnesota Vikings and Detroit Lions game? The Lions – they, you know, some weeks they'll come out and look like a top five team, and then other weeks they'll come out looking like they should pick top five in the draft. So which Lions team do you think the Minnesota Vikings will get Sunday in Detroit? Well, this is the thing. The, the Minnesota Vikings, uh, they have they have a good team. I mean, when you talk about quarterback, you know, Kirk Cousins is a guy that I don't love when you're talking about the playoffs when it's more prime time. When it's really time for you to push the chip to the middle of the table, I'm not a fan. But if you're talking about, you know, being serviceable, being a good quarterback throughout the regular season, especially if Kirk Cousins is that. Um, then when you talk about Dalvin Cook, it's a very good running back. Uh, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, two very good receivers. Now you have T.J. Hawkinson, who was a very good tight end. So they're loaded on their football team. They have plenty of talent. Uh, when you talk about the Detroit Lions, their offense is, is very, very good. They have weapons in offense. Um, but the defense is terrible. So I, I just don't – I don't know. I, they should be able to dominate. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings should be able to go up and down the field on their defense, and they should win that game by at least at least a touchdown because they are a very good team who is looking to, you know, try to get the number one seed, which they, have a, they still have a chance. So I'm expecting the Minnesota Vikings to handle their business fairly early. 
Well, the only reason why I think this game will be close because you said the Detroit Lions don't have a good defense. That uh, Vikings secondary is is fettuccine, uh, to be nice. Uh, they they if they can't get pressure on your quarterback, their secondary is not very good. So I could see this being a shootout, but um, I just think the Minnesota Vikings have too much on offense. Uh, I expect Justin Jefferson to have a big game against the Detroit secondary, who's not very good. And I'm expecting this to be high scoring. I'm expecting us to get the good side of the Lions. Uh, and I'm expecting the Vikings to get a late field goal to win this game. Uh, how bad the Vikings are on defense, uh, as we've seen. Uh, they made Mac Jones look like Patrick Mahomes uh, on Thanksgiving. So uh expect that one to be close for sure. So uh, our next game is Jacksonville. The Jacksonville Jaguars visiting the Tennessee Titans. Uh, give me the Tennessee Titans here. Uh, Jacksonville, they've come back to earth uh, since they pulled off that upset against the Ravens. I still don't know how they pulled that game off uh, uh, the way they looked uh, last week against Detroit. Um, I'm glad Trevor Lawrence is okay because that hit he took to his leg, it looked scary. I thought uh, the worst, but uh, he's okay, thankfully. But I think Derek Henry is going to have a big game on the ground. And I think ten Tennessee will get a big divisional win at home. And I got the Tennessee Titans winning this game. How about you, Ro? I agree with the Tennessee Titans beating the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. You know, Derrick Henry is doing a good game. He's pretty much been average this year, especially the last three games. He's not been Derrick Henry that we expect. Yeah, so no. he's doing a big game uh, against Jacksonville. Uh, like you said, that Jacksonville is not good. A lot of people had false hope through three or four weeks when they looked pretty good. Um, they barely lost to my commanders. Um, and they had some other games where they they look good, but they're not a good team. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is not paying out to be what we thought he would be in the NFL. He was he was expected to be, I mean, top top level. I'm talking about top two, top three quarterback. That's the kind of hype he had, and he's he's not even been the top ten quarterback, top fifteen quarterback. So, um, yeah, Jacksonville is just not a very good team. Um, I expect the Tennessee Titans to handle their business. Um, and like you said, lean on the run because you know they're the best when they don't have to necessarily put things in the hands of Ryan Tannehill. He's a guy that does not mind making mistakes. So if Derrick Henry can establish the run early and they can chew up clock, they'll get out of there with an easy win. Yeah, but I but I like what Doug Peterson is doing in Jacksonville. I think it's going to take a couple of years for uh, them to turn things around just because they're so young and Trevor Lawrence makes way too many mistakes. Uh, so it's going to take them a while to turn things around. But, yes, Tennessee is going to win this one. If they handle their business, they should win this one very comfortably. Uh, next, we have the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the New York Giants. Uh, Ruff, how do you see this game playing out? Man, this is going to be a good game. It should be. Uh, you know, the NFC East clash mashup. Uh, best division in football this year. Can't believe I'm saying that. Me uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they literally went from the worst like two years ago to the best. <laughs> um. So, but yeah, I mean, that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a good game. I think it's gonna come down to who can um, run the ball better. You know, will it be Saquon or will it be Miles Sanders, Sanders and Jalen Hurts? Um, along with Daniel Jones, can he sprinkle in enough runs? Can he keep them honest? Um, and, and it, you know, when you're always talking about the Giants, you have to talk about keep taking care of the football. But Daniel Jones will turn the ball over too. He's done a better job this season. But um, it's, it's, it should be a good game. Like I said, I, I really don't know who's going to necessarily win. I'm going to probably go with the Eagles, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants won. I think the Eagles just have more talent, though, of course. Uh, I, I'm impressed by the job that Brian Dayball has done coaching for the Giants because when you think about how many of their wide receivers are hurt uh, or either traded now in Kadarius Tony, he's done a great job coaching. I think he's got to be in the – um, and they're running for Coach of the Year. But I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles by six to seven points. Uh, I think it's going to be a competitive game and uh, come down to the fourth quarter. Yes, I also have the Philadelphia Eagles winning. Um, as we know, the Giants don't have a great offensive line. And I stated a couple of weeks ago, I don't think that the Giants and Daniel Jones will be able to beat a team that has a good defensive line because that's going to be their kryptonite every time because um, they're just not – their offensive line is just very horrible. 
Um, but one thing to look out for is how Jalen Hurts is going to handle Wink Martindale's pressure. Because Wink Martindale, he's known for blowing the quarterback up, putting a lot of pressure on the pressure on the quarterback, a lot of heat on him. So how will Jalen Hurts handle that? And also, I don't think the Giants have anybody to deal with A.J. Brown. He's just a man on a mission. He finally has a very good, decent quarterback in Jalen Hurts. So I expect him to have a big day. I expect this to be close because it's a divisional game. The Giants will be all revved up for this. They had a tie last week against Washington. So they'll be revved up to play the Eagles. Um, but give me Philly here. Um, I think that it's the better team, and I think – Jalen Hurts is the better quarterback, and I think he'll make some big-time plays down the stretch to help them get this win. Next, we have the Baltimore Ravens uh, visiting the Pittsburgh Steelers. As we know, Lamar has a PCL uh, sprain in his knee, so he's going to be out one to three weeks. He won't be playing this week, uh, but Huntley is going to take over for him. And Huntley's looked pretty good when he's had the fill-in for Lamar because Lamar's got nicked and hurt the last couple of seasons. And Huntley has done a very good job filling in for him. So I expect this to be a low-scoring, very physical game. Uh, I expect both defenses to really dominate this game. Uh, but I think Huntley and this Ravens team, they find a way to win on the road uh, because they're in a battle with the Bengals for that AFC North. So the Ravens really can't afford to lose this game. I don't really think the Steelers are going anywhere necessarily this year. Uh, so give me the Ravens. I think they'll find a way to win a tough road game. How about you, Ralph? I'm actually going with the Pittsburgh Steelers in this game, I think. Oh. Like you said, it'll be a great matchup, uh, even without Lamar Jackson, uh, division opponents. Uh, but I think in the end, uh, Najee Harris, I think is going to be able to do some things on the ground. Um, and if you ask me, do I trust Kenny Pickett? Or uh, Huntley. Huntley, I'm going to take Penny Pickett. Although I don't think neither one of them are that great. But I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that uh, Lamar will be missed. His versatility as far as throwing the football and running. Um, and Pittsburgh has looked better lately. One thing that they need to figure out how to um, correct is not getting George Pickens the ball. George Pickens is the most explosive receiver that they have on that team. Yes, he it's is. No excuse, it's no excuse for him to have one catch for two yards on two targets. It's not going to work. So I think they're going to make a more of an effort to get him involved in the game early and often. And I think Pittsburgh will win, Pittsburgh will win a close game, maybe uh, twenty, maybe 26 to 23, something like that, or 23-20, something like that. Okay. I, I wasn't expecting to get that high score, and I was going like maybe 17 to 14 or something like that, uh, just because I expect both these defenses to wreck the game, like I stated. But we shall see. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Pittsburgh pulls it off at home because uh, they're going to play for the head coach, and, you know, they have a lot of pride in Pittsburgh. Uh, they beat Atlanta last week. I know that's not saying much, but uh, they, they squeaked out a tough one in Atlanta last week, so maybe they can do it again at home this week. Uh, but, you know, yeah. you know uh, defenses you know defenses uh, playing well can still lead the points, and that's, what I'm, that's the kind of position that I'm taking. I'm thinking that both teams have at least one turnover. Okay. And they start off with short fields leading to, you know, quick and easy touchdowns. Okay. That's a possibility because Baltimore is going to have to block T.J. Watt. Uh, that's a man possessed coming off that edge. So definitely look out for that. Uh, next, uh, this one is just going to be ugly. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are visiting the Denver Broncos. Uh, I have no earthly idea what's going on with Russell Wilson. Um, something is wrong. Uh, and I can't wait to find out what's wrong with Russell Wilson because since Halloween, the Broncos have scored seven touchdowns, seven touchdowns. It is December 7th, and since Halloween, October 30th, 31st, excuse me, the Denver Broncos on offense have scored seven touchdowns. That is atrocious. Uh, to put this in perspective, Peyton Manning scored seven touchdowns in his first game with the Broncos. So that goes to show you how – this offense has fallen off. I don't know what's going on with Russell Wilson. The Chiefs haven't lost a game in November or December since 2018, and they definitely won't lose this week. The Broncos have a great defense, but one thing we, we saw uh, against the Panthers and last week against the Ravens, when you keep putting them out there on the field, eventually they're going to crack. Um, and I'm expecting Mahomes, he won't put up like big gaudy numbers this week. 
but he will do enough to get the, a win on the road. I just can't count on Russell Wilson scoring enough points to keep up with Mahomes. So give me the Chiefs, and I'm a hundred percent confident about this pick. How about you, Rafa? Do you think Denver's gonna pull the upset in this game? No, absolutely not. I think that, <laughs> um, like you said, Russell Wilson, he looks awful. I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, it's just it's just not been a good year for him. Uh, I don't believe they have a good coach. Um, so it's a lot of things working against that football team currently. Um, Jerry Judy is a solid receiver, but he's dropped the ball and he's not really reliable. Hmm. Uh, Cortland Sutton seems like he might be upset with the team because he played last week and left real early. They claim he had an illness, I believe. I, I don't know. It, it's just like everybody, they're almost like the Rams at this point. They, they're just waiting on vacation because they're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, they wait on some vacation. Because they're not going anywhere this season. And we know that the Kansas City Chiefs have a lot to play for. They lost a the game last week against the Cincinnati Bengals. A lot of people are upset about it. And so I think they're going to come out and they're going to be – have their foot on the gas from the start. And uh, they're going to take care of their business fairly easily, probably by 10 to 14 points. Well, since you bring it up, uh, Ruff, I know you're looking forward to this. On Christmas Day, you get to watch Russell Wilson versus the Los Angeles Rams. I know you're looking forward to that. 4.30 on Fox. I know you can't wait to watch two horrible teams play uh, while you spend time with your family. Aren't you looking forward to that, Ruff? <laughs> I'll be watching basketball. <laughs> I figured she would say that. I wish, they could, I wish they could flex that out, but unfortunately they cannot do that. Um, well, next is our game of the week. Uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks visiting the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, the Bucks are coming off a huge comeback win. I wouldn't really say it's a comeback. I would say more of bad coaching by the Saints and an epic collapse. You're up 13 points with five minutes to go, and you just fall all apart. You fall all apart. Um, Mark Ingram goes out of bounds for I don't know what reason. He claimed his hamstring was hurt. You can drag that hamstring one more yard and kill some clock. Uh, but Tom Brady's going to have a more daunting task this week. Uh that 49ers defense is legit. Nick Bosa is going to be hunting Tom Brady all game long. And the San Francisco defense is the reason why I'm picking them in our game of the week. Uh, I don't know who's going to play quarterback for them. I guess Brock Purdy, uh, since they didn't claim Baker Mayfield off waivers. I think he can do a serviceable job, get the ball to Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Inuk, and all their other weapons on offense. But, yeah, that 49ers defense, they're legit. Their game records, especially that front seven and the secondary is no joke. Um, so, give me San Francisco in this game. Yeah, when you talk about that Mark Ingram play, man, <laughs> that, you can't convince me that that play didn't lose the game alone. Because you not only did you not keep the clock running, that's, that's 35, 40 seconds that you would have kept coming off the clock if you get the first down. Exactly. Alone on that play. And then with the first down, that means you have three more downs to continue to run clock. So that, that play alone for me, I, I don't believe that the Buccaneers can win that game if he gets that first down that he should have got. Um, but talking about that matchup this week, um, San Francisco, I, I don't know. I, I think Tampa Bay – I don't think Tampa Bay's a very good football team either. Um, no. I, I just don't. They've shown us week after week that they have to – when they do win, they kind of escape. It, it's got to take something happening that shouldn't happen. Um, but like you said, San Francisco with Brock Purdy, I don't know if I can really put my faith in him. Um, I think it, it'll be a game where if San Francisco wants to win, their defense is going to have to be dominant. Nick Bosa. It's going to have to be Nick Bosa again. He had three sacks last week, and in my opinion, he's the defensive player of the year right now. The season was over. (laughs) Um, Well, a lot of people had Micah for a while, but he's had some quiet games. Um, (laughs) But, yeah, I I think that – that's tough. Because San Francisco defense is legit, but – I'm I'm gonna go with Tampa Bay. I'm gonna go with Tampa Bay, but I don't feel good about it. I really don't. I think that game would go either way. It would not surprise me if Purdy 
uh, turns the ball over two or three times and allows uh, Tampa Bay to win. And it wouldn't surprise me if Brady is forced to look for again the way he has. And uh, Nick Bosa has two sacks. And, you know, the rest of their defense has an interception or two. So I'm going with Tampa Bay, but I don't really have any courage in my conviction. Yeah, I'm just wondering if Tom Brady's going to have any time to, like, get it to his receivers. Because, uh, like like we said, the way Nick Bosa's playing right now, it's just – I just don't know the way Tampa's uh, offensive line looked against the Saints, and now they're going up against an even better uh, defensive line. So that's concerning. I just don't know if the Bucks going to be able to score enough points. Uh, but we shall yeah. see. He's checked down time this season. I mean, it's terrible. I mean, he, he had 30 completions for 167 yards. I mean, he's not throwing the ball nowhere. I mean, everything at the line of scrimmage. I mean, when you think about Leonard Fournette and – and Rashad White, I think they had 10 or 11 catches combined. Anytime you're throwing 11 receptions to running backs, that means that you're not really trying to move the ball. And we know that Godwin, pretty much everything he catches right now is at the line of scrimmage or three or four yards down the field. So, it's, yeah, I think what's going to have to happen if Tampa Bay wants to win, because it's going to have to be a lot of short passes again, like you said, with the way Nick Bosa and the rest of them are coming. They're going to have to convert them short passes into big games. It's going to have to be some broken tackles. So we'll see. It'll be a close one, I think, though. Most definitely. Uh, next, we have the Carolina Panthers visiting the Seattle Seahawks. Um, how do you see this one playing out? Do you think the Panthers will get the upset, or do you think Seattle will handle business at home? Well, as a Commanders fan, I wish the Carolina would win the game, but I don't see it. <laughs> you know, because Seattle is like a half game above us right now oh, that's uh, true. with the wild card positioning. Um, but I just don't see it. Carolina is it's not a f- good football team. Uh, they they should be tanking, although they won. They won a couple games lately that they shouldn't even be winning. Um, so I think Geno Smith will continue to play well. I, t- I tweeted about it the other night. Geno Smith has earned himself the bag. I think Gino was only making it about $5 million this year, uh, somewhere around there. And with the way he's playing, they're going to offer him two years, $50 million or something like that in this offseason. And uh, if he continues this anyway. Uh, so I think Seattle is just going to be too much. And they're actually a team, like I said, that has something to play for. Uh, Gino Smith, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. I think they uh, they have their way with the Carolina Panthers defense. Yeah, I also got Seattle winning because, like you said, uh, they're fighting for playoff position and uh, they can't afford to lose to a Panthers team who's not very good. Uh, and I just don't think the Panthers will have an answer for DK, Tyler Lockett. Uh, I don't know if Kenneth Walker will play. But Geno, he's playing really well right now, so hopefully we get good Geno Sunday and not bad Geno. Uh, and with that tie, it's just uh, really – uh, unfortunate for your commanders that they weren't able to win that game or lose it because that tie it, it causes all type of trouble. Uh, so I definitely got. Well, Seattle. no, it's it's better for us. I would rather us win, uh, tie it than lose it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because a loss yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. if yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we should have won that game. That was disappointing for sure. Yeah, it was just so many opportunities for both teams to win that game. Uh, that was really unfortunate. Our Sunday night game, it's going to be a good one. This could be an offensive showcase. Uh, we got the Miami Dolphins visiting the Los Angeles Chargers. The Dolphins, they dropped a tough one last week at the 49ers. Uh, the 49ers defense really got off the tour. Uh, so the Chargers, I feel like they're going to need uh, Khalil Mack to do the same thing. Uh, but I think the Dolphins, whoo, this is a tough one. This is a toss-up. But I think the Dolphins, they have a lot more on the line. I know the Chargers are fighting for a playoff spot as well. But the Dolphins still have a chance to win their division because uh, they right now they have uh, the tiebreaker over the Bills, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I think they need this game a little more than the Chargers. So I think this is going to be a really close game. I wouldn't be surprised if this game turns into a shootout. Uh, but I'm not very confident in this pick. <laughs> Uh, because Justin Herbert is a bad man. Uh, and I would love to see the Chargers in the playoffs, but I just think Miami has a lot more on the line in this game. So I think Tyreek and Waddle, I think they'll put up some numbers, and I think 
the Dolphins will get a close competitive win on the road in Inglewood, California. How about you, Ruff? Do you think who do you think's gonna win this one? Yeah, I think that the Miami Dolphins will bounce back um, and win this game. But for me, it's gonna be a high scoring game, like you said. I wonder what Tua has done this week in practice. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't practice a couple of days because he got beat up last week. I know his body has been sore. Um, So I'm expecting the the Dolphins to bounce back, though, like you said, um, and take care of business. But I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I just can't really trust the Chargers, man. When it comes down to being in close games and – you know, winning games that they should, it's like they lose those games. Um, So I think Tyreek and Tua will bounce back and lead the team to a win against the Chargers. I do too. And, man, Tua's got a track team of receiver, man. So I think you know how you were saying Brady's just going to do a bunch of short stuff to his receivers. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if Khalil Mack starts to make a little noise in this game. If Tua don't just throw Tyreek and Waddle some little short little routes, just get the ball in their hands because we know how explosive they are whenever they get the ball in their hands. So that would not surprise me at all. And our Monday night game, uh, I don't know why this is a Monday night game, but, hey, it's our Monday night game. We got the New England Patriots visiting the Arizona Cardinals. Rough, how do you see this game playing out? Uh. I think the Arizona Cardinals will win this game. I just don't have a whole lot of faith in New England's offense right now. Uh, they're very dependent on the running game. Uh, if you lock, you lock down that run and you force uh, Matt Jones to beat you, it's not it's not been a good thing for them. Um, so I think that Kyler Murray will put together a good game. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins has proven after his suspension that he's still one of the best receivers in football. Um, and uh, – I just think that Arizona in the end will will make a few plays to separate themselves and win this game in a close one. I also have the Cardinals winning because they have a very brutal closing schedule, and I really think this is about one of the only remaining games left that they have that's winnable, um, if I'm being honest. So, like you said, uh, Mac Jones, he doesn't have a real offensive coordinator. Um, he's, he's so-so to begin with. Uh, they're very dependent on their run game, like you said. Uh, I am a little concerned because the Patriots can get out of the quarterback. That is concerning. Uh, but I think Kyler and DeAndre and the Softmans, uh, Marquise Brown, I think they just find a way to win this game. Uh, because, because the Cardinals have had a rough season this year. Uh, it's been very disappointing along with the Rams. They're one of the most disappointing teams in the league. Uh, so I definitely expect the Cardinals to handle business at home on Monday Night Football and get a very – this this will probably be a very close competitive game. Uh, the Patriots are right there in that same boat with the Chargers. They really need this game, um, but I just can't put much trust in their offense like you said. So give me Arizona in this game. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, well, that does it for today's episode of Keeps Hot, of Keeps Hot Takes. Uh, I want to thank my guy C-Ruff for joining the show today, Ruff. Uh, before we close out, you want to tell everybody where they can support you and find your podcast and your social media platforms and all that, bro. Yeah, so you can follow me um, and my podcast. You can follow the podcast at Time My Sports Podcast on Spotify and iTunes. Uh, you can follow our Twitter account at Time My Sports Three again, Time My Sports Three, and uh, on there we have polls and. And you know, birthday shout outs and all type of content. So just follow and make sure to interact with me on there. Um the Instagram page is Time Out Sports with two underscores. And also you can follow my um WNBA League Fitz page, which is what's created to highlight the style and the fashion of the ladies in the WNBA. You can hi- you can follow that page on Instagram at WNBA League Fitz. And the Twitter account is Fitz underscore WNBA. So just make sure to follow me on those platforms and stay in touch uh, and talk some sports. Yes, sir. So I appreciate you, my brother, and keep doing the great things you're doing. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you just dropped the podcast uh, yesterday or, or yeah, yesterday or the day before. I saw yesterday, you have, yeah. Yeah, so, so that y'all make sure y'all check that out. Um, and I'll have all his uh, pages where you can follow him at below. 
And I'll put a link to his podcast in the description. So just look in the description. They'll have a link to Ruff's podcast and where you can find it and all that. So thank you again, Ruff, and I'll be in touch soon, my brother. All right. Thanks. Take care. You too.